The JSE may mimic sharply weaker Asian markets uh, today as geopolitical tensions rise between China and both the EU and US, leaving the rand flat against the dollar in early trade. To give us a sense of what is driving the markets today, we're joined uh, on the line by Michael Traherne, Portfolio Manager at Vestact. Michael, a very good morning to you. Thanks uh, once again for joining us. Give us a sense of how the markets are looking this morning. Yes, we Paul. Great to uh, talk to you on this cold Tuesday morning. Uh, as you said, JSC also wasn't looking good this morning. JSC is now down 1.4% following the lead from uh, Asian markets. As you said, uh, political tension between the U.S. and China, the U.S. and the EU not helping. Um, and then finally, uh, yesterday evening, uh, the governor of California in the U.S. Uh, reimposing uh, new lockdown measures on that state. It's rather significant because California is the wealthiest state in the U.S., so it's quite a, it has quite a big knock-on impact on all the companies operating in the U.S., and that uh, just seems to take the wind out of the market sales today. Uh, what will drive markets going forward, though, the U.S. earnings season starts this afternoon, and that will give a very big direction of how global companies are faring in the current environment. Now, the future, the future of embattled SAA will be decided today. What happens if the creditors vote against this rescue plan? Yes, there's a very real chance that uh, SAA then gets put into liquidation. Uh, every day or every week's delay in uh, implementing a rescue plan costs more money. Um, and at some point, the money just runs out and liquidation is your only option. Uh, that's not to say that that will be the case, but it does make it more likely. Mm. Um, and if liquidation happens, more than likely all the parties involved will receive less money than expected. It is worth noting, though, that uh, Treasury and the uh, Public Enterprises uh, Department, you know, they're two separate government agencies, and uh, Public Enterprises is very keen to reach to the airline where Treasury has been fairly non-committal so far in terms of how much money they want to uh, stump up. So there's still a lot of unknowns around SAA. Local mining production for May is due later and it's expected to show some, some improvements from April's figures. What are your expectations on that forefront? Yeah, but uh, in, uh, we, when we had April's figures, April showed uh, terrible mining, uh, which is to be expected. Gold production in April was down 60% and mining overall was down 48%. Uh, so in May we're expecting quite a sharp rebound from those terrible numbers. Um, but uh, it's, 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 that's the main thing we want to see, some sort of rebound and uh, get some sort of indication of what uh, June could look like as well. As, as we stay with mining, we know that uh, the Anglo-American stable will be in focus next week with uh, operational reviews expected for the second quarter of this year. What can we expect from those figures? Yes, yeah, so they, uh, they had an uh, operational update in the middle of April, which was basically when most of the globe was under some form of lockdown. Uh, they were talking about how they cut uh, capital spend, um, and particularly they were talking about how the Chilean and Brazilian mines were still at the, both their full capacity, even though they were on reduced stock. Uh, those two countries now are two of the worst hit globally, uh, so investors will be having a look at how bad uh, the, the Chilean and the Brazilian operations are faring. And then, of course, how the rest of the group is, is faring, and it's worth noting that the financial results come out at the end of July. So these uh, production numbers up uh, in two days' time will be talking, will be giving a very big indication of what we can expect at the end of July, and you will expect to see share price movements based on that. 